Hey, Pin Dude here. Welcome back to My Vintage Pinball, and welcome to part number three of Pinball Restoration Update on the 1979 Gottlieb Countdown, the quickie restoration we're doing on this game that I picked up off Pinside, which, unlike games that I usually pick up, was a working, functioning, pretty decent-looking game. Uh, but I wanted to do a quickie restore on it. I call it a quickie restore for me. Uh, as it usually takes me 10 months to restore a game. This game is going to take considerably less time than that. Uh, so far, we're about uh, three and a half to four weeks in, I think. The cabinet is almost done. Uh, if you saw the last episode, we have the cabinet completely restored and almost ready to go. And we got the coin door completely ripped apart. And in this episode, we start with restoring all those pieces of the coin door. If you remember, I had a whole counter here full of parts, a lot of pieces to that Gottlieb System 1 coin door. Uh, so we're going to go through all those parts, restore those parts, get everything nice and shiny, uh, get the wire and harness and the coin door nice and clean, reassemble that coin door, bolt it on the cabinet, bring this cabinet into the house, and get the head out here so we can start working on the restoration of the cabinet head. That's all on this episode, part number three of Gottlieb Countdown. Well, let's get started. All right, so we're going through uh, now that we, in the last video, when we ended, we got all the uh, coin door completely apart. And you saw I had a bazillion pieces on the bench. So I need to work through all those pieces. Now, the nice thing about having uh, both a ultrasonic cleaner and a tumbler is it really doesn't require much of your your time to go through all these pieces so the way i do this is uh if a piece is really disgusting and like has especially with coin doors you'll have like dried on coca-cola or maybe beer that spilled down through the lockdown bar uh i'll typically pre-soak that stuff and kind of work it off with a uh, toothbrush just to get some of that heavy gunk off and then it goes straight into the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, this is uh, the Harbor Freight one. Uh, it works just fine. Uh, the timer, the maximum time is 480 seconds. So all my parts are run two 480 second cycles. So two full cycles on this. And the main thing is to make sure the water is hot. Uh, so I will turn it on like right now. I am warming this up because I have uh, another batch of stuff to do. So it's warming up. Uh, it is faster to warm it up by running a cycle. So uh, a lot of times I'll just turn it on. I'll turn the heater on, which is the TC button. And this red light means the heater is on. And then I will run a 480 second cycle. That helps to heat up the cleaner better. And as I've mentioned before, I use a 50-50 mix of uh, mean green. So 50% mean green to 50%. Uh, I use distilled, distilled water. And you can see uh, the, my cleaner is very disgusting uh, because all of the parts of the coin door have gone through this. So you can see it's awfully gunky. Uh, but I only have a couple parts left to do for the coin door, so I will continue to use this cleaner. And then I'll dump it out and uh, put fresh uh, mean green and water in there. Uh, so after that, I just throw it in the tumbler. And for this coin door, the parts, when they come out of the ultrasonic cleaner, really aren't that bad. Uh, so I'm just going right into corn cob media with a little bit of the mother's uh, magnum aluminum polish. I just take a couple of drops and drop them into the corn. So I'm actually ready to take this batch out of the corn so i'm just using a little magnet on a stick and you can see how nice i mean these parts were uh pitted and not very shiny at all even even after coming out of the ultrasonic cleaner they looked pretty good uh so this is uh basically 48 hours i run these parts in the corn so two full days i'll run in the corn and after the first day I will put another couple drops of the Magan aluminum polish in and they come out looking this good. So some of the parts that were heavily pitted, you can still see the pit in a little bit, but uh, you don't really notice it. When we get the coin door all back together, you know, it, it'll look very nice. So here's another part, quite a bit of pit in. Uh, 
as you can see, but it's not that bad. And since on a coin door you have basically two sides, if it had two coin mechs on it, some of the valleys also had a uh, silver dollar mech in the middle. So you always have two sets of a lot of these parts. So you can take the better part and put it in the more visible position and take the part that's not as pretty and put it in the less visible position when the coin door is open. So <clears throat> just continue to uh, grab the rest of the parts out of here and then we will move on. All right, so I got everything that I had in the tumbler in that batch out, and I went through and removed all the corn from the slots or anywhere that corn was stuck. And now I'm going to put them in a bag uh, and put them on the bench so they're ready to go when I reassemble the coin door. And on the bag, I write what processes whatever went, is in the bag went through. So in this one, I have a, um, a U for ultrasonic cleaning, and I have a C, which means it went through corn cob media. Uh, that way there's no question whether to whether is or not that the stuff that I put in that bag is done or not. Uh, so we'll just put all this stuff in bags, set it aside, move on to the next stuff. And then, you know, by the time we're all done, uh, the coin door is ready to be reassembled. All right. So there was a, a lot of rusty uh, metal parts. A lot of the zinc plated parts were pretty rusted, had a lot of pit in and physical, you know, rust on them. So I put them in a vapor rust. I just used a big Tupperware container in this case. And you can see I was able to fit a ton of parts in here. And it's about three quarters of a gallon of evapor rust in here. And this is the third time I've used this batch of evapor rust and it still looks pretty much like brand new. So uh, we, as I've mentioned before, this is reusable. So to get this out, I'm going to use a big funnel on top of the Evaporust bottle. And then I'm using this. These are uh, automotive paint strainers. Um, I'm using these because I happen to have a ton of these. Uh, but you can also use a coffee filter for this. I'm um, just putting that in the funnel. That'll catch any uh, debris or dead bugs or whatever happens to be in the Evaporust here. So we get the cleanest uh, Evaporust back into the bottle here. And I'm just going to leave the parts in here. Oh, I'm also using latex gloves. Uh, this Evaporust, they say it's safe on skin and everything, but I, I have these latex gloves, so I, I just feel better using them. And I'm just going to try to carefully pour the Evaporust back through the strainer here and into the bottle. All right, so now we got to go outside and we need to rinse all these parts clean. And you'll, you'll actually see there's still what looks like some rust left on the parts. It'll rinse right off with the water. Uh, so let's uh, head outside to the hose and rinse this stuff off. All right, it's pretty windy and awfully cold today, so we'll try to make this quick. Uh, I also want to rinse out my funnel and the container that the evaporust was in. So I'm just going to go through and rinse all this stuff off and then we will uh, blow it off with a blow gun and uh, whatever, whatever will fit in the tumbler, uh, these parts will get tumbled. Otherwise, if they don't fit in the tumbler, I'll have to hand buff them. But I'll get these all dried off and I'll kind of show you what we're left with after the evaporus here. All right, so we got the parts all rinsed off and I blew everything off real good with a uh, air blow gun. And I'm just gonna let them sit here and air dry and then I'll bag this stuff up uh, so it's ready for me to work on them when I have time to either put them in the tumbler or hand buff them with the magnet aluminum polish. Uh, but you can see everything looks pretty good. Um, you can see all the pit in. All the pit in is where there was rust, especially you know on these coin chutes, there was, you can see there was piles of rust built up the evaporust took that all off. Obviously, any damage that the rust did is still going to be there, but once we shine these parts up, uh, they'll be fine. Most importantly, a part like this, uh, you know, where a coin goes through, this doesn't come apart. It's a welded assembly. It was complete rust on the inside. Uh, there's no other way that I would have been able to get all that rust off had I not used the evaporust. So, you know, all these parts look real good. 
And as I mentioned before, uh, you'll have duplicates of a lot of parts. So you can see this part looks perfectly mint. Once uh, this gets buffed up, it's going to look real good. But this one had a bunch of rust on it, and you can see where all the pits are. So, you know, when the, game, when the coin door is on the game and you open the door, I'll make sure that this part is visible. And this part is, you know, in the back where you're not going to notice it. Uh, so, very happy with the evaporust. All right, so let's uh, move along. All right, so I'm on my last few pieces that need to be ultrasonic. And a couple of these pieces uh, are bigger than my uh, Tupperware container that I evaporust. So I need to do another batch of eva evaporust for some of the longer pieces that I have. As you can see, there's a bunch of rust in here and down here. Uh, but, you know, you don't want to just put this dirty piece in the evaporust because then all these loose particles and everything will end up in your evaporust. Uh, so I always ultrasonic clean them first. And uh, you'll see, I'll show you when I take this out. This will look a lot better after it goes through the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So my ultrasonic cleaner is all warmed up. I'm just going to drop the piece in there. Luckily, this piece just fits in the uh, Harbor Freight um, ultrasonic cleaner here. And then I'm going to set it for uh, 480, 480 seconds, the maximum that this will do. And then when that's done, I'm going to do one more 480 second cycle, and then I'll take it out and I'll show you what we got. All right, so we're just about done here with the second cycle. All right, just shut off. And we'll pull it out here. You can see it already looks a heck of a lot better than it did when I put it in there. And a lot of that gunk, see all that? It was all piled up like rust. It's now in my cleaner, in my ultrasonic. And now that won't, uh, you know, get into the evaporust. And the evaporust will take off the rest of that rust. So let me blow this off real quick. The cool thing about uh, when the part comes out of the evaporust, because the cleaner is so hot, uh, the part kind of air dries itself real quick. So there's not, uh, not a lot to blow off. So there it is. Uh, it looks a heck of a lot better than it did before I put it in the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, I didn't have to hand clean it. I didn't have to do anything other than put it in the ultrasonic and hit a couple buttons. And now we'll throw this in the evaporust and move on. I also have a couple more parts in here I got to pull out. Ooh, that's hot. All right, put another load of uh, parts into the tumbler. Uh, you'll notice. There's not a lot in here. Um, I found very quickly in Tumlin that the least amount of parts possible to put in here, they'll come out a lot better. When you have a lot of parts in here, they can't move around as good, uh, so they won't get as shiny. And also things will bump into each other more often, and you can end up with like some scratches on the plate in. So you always wanna do the, the least amount that is possible. And then uh, I'm just, like I've mentioned before, I'm using the Mother's Magnet Aluminum Polish. I just uh, use a popsicle stick and get a couple dollops of it. And then I'll uh, drop them into the, on top of the corn. I'll usually do three or four little dollops. And then I'll run this for 24 hours. And then after that 24 hours, I'll open up the tumbler. I'll check my parts. I'll put a couple more dollops of this in there, and then I'll run it for yet another 24 hours. So all these parts will go through this corn cob media uh, for 48 hours. All right, the queen door wire and harness, I just uh, cleaned it by hand with a uh, mean green toothbrush, blew it off real good, uh, used a ultra fine scotch Brite pad just to try to clean up some of this metal on like the lamp sockets and the switch blades. Uh, I mean, now I'm going to hang this up to air dry. I blew it off as good as I can, blew out the uh, connectors as best as I can. Uh, so I'm just going to hang it on the wall and let it dry out, air dry. All right, so I just hung that on my pegboard there, the uh, queen door wiring harness to air dry. And then I have the last few pieces that I needed to do the evaporust on. Uh, they were a little too long for any of the Tupperware containers I had. So I found this uh, old plastic trash can that I had. 
I put the pieces in there, dumped the evaporust in it, and then put the trash can in a garbage bag and made sure it was sealed tight so that uh, the evaporust won't evaporate. We'll let that sit for 24 hours and we'll take that stuff out and rinse it off. Uh, so we're just about, uh, just about done with all the pieces inside the coin door, but now we need to work on the actual coin door itself. All right, so we got the coin door out. You can see, uh, I don't know, it's like somebody took a Brillo pad and like did a swirl pattern on it. It looks pretty bad. Uh, this outer skin is stainless steel. It used to be brushed all in this direction. Uh, we're going to try to clean this up the best I can. There's some deeper scratches that I won't be able to deal with unless I want to get the sandpapers out and start really going to town on this. Uh, but I don't really want to, so we're just going to use a red scotch Brite pad, I think and try to get the grain back in it. Uh, and it's very dirty under all the assemblies, so we need to clean it. But uh, first we need to get the sticker off. Uh, the previous owner put this new sticker on. I don't like it, it's a little crooked, and there's a bunch of gunk under it, so we need to take it off. I bought a new one. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's $4.50 from Pinball Resource for this sticker, but uh, we need to take it off. So I'm gonna use a heat gun and a plastic razor blade to take this off. going to heat the decal up a little bit and then the plastic razor blade won't damage the stainless steel. Oh look at that. There is a sticker on top of a sticker. There's the new sticker. There's the old sticker. Oh boy. All right so now we got one sticker off we need to get another one off. The heat gun really makes it easy to uh, get off. If you tried to get this old sticker off without the heat gun, it would just come off in like a bazillion pieces. And it would leave a lot of glue behind. This way we're not gonna have too much glue behind. All right, we got both the new and the old sticker, which I didn't know was still there, off. Uh, just have some glue left. I'm gonna try the flour and alcohol method on this. I don't feel like dealing with goo gone or anything. So I'm just gonna put a little flour on there. And pour some alcohol on there, let it sit a little bit, and then uh, we'll see if it rubs right off like it does on Mylar. And we'll come back and see if it comes right off. All right, so just like when I remove Mylar glue, I'm just gonna swirl my finger around here. And I can feel that the glue is balling up. So we'll get some of this excess off of here. Yeah, it's coming right off, so. That worked just fine, it's making a smeary mess. Probably have to apply this one more time. This glue from the old sticker is pretty tough. But it is coming off. So I'll apply one more application, get that all cleaned up, and I'll be right back. All right, I got the rest of the sticker residue off, and then I uh, soaked this thing in Mean Green, both inside and out. And then I rinsed, I took it inside and rinsed it real good in the sink with very hot water. And it's clean now. I blew it off real good with the blow gun. So now that it's clean, we need to start to try to regrain this as best we can, uh, because some imbecile kind of just took something and kind of smear, you know, and wiped it in all directions instead of just going in one direction. And then the back here, um, uh, we'll probably just try to buff it up. I, I, you know, there's not too much we're gonna be able to do with this, but we'll get it looking a lot better. But my main concern is to get the front looking good. And then, like I said, we'll get that new sticker on there. And this is the last piece we need to do, and then we'll be putting this back together. So let's start trying to get this looking good. All right, so my last batch of parts that needed to go through Evaporust has been soaking for 24 hours. I just got home from work. Uh, 
And I'm finding really quick, uh, since I'm new to Evaporus, that there isn't a one-size-fits-all container. you got to like come up with some kind of container for whatever size part you're doing. Uh, so in this case, I had this trash can that happened to fit the parts that I needed to do. Uh, so there's almost a gallon of Evaporus in the bottom, and you saw last night I wrapped the trash bag around it to seal it up. So I'm going to pull these parts out, rinse them off. I'll show you what, uh, how they came out. And then I need to get this evaporust out of this trash can and back into the original bottle. All right, so let's see if I can get almost a gallon of evaporust out of this garbage can and back into the bin without spilling anything. And I didn't. Oh, boy. Well, we lost a little bit. What are you going to do? <laughs> all right so here's those last pieces i just took out of the evapor rust uh as all the other stuff they came out really good all the rust is off that big pile of rust that was down here now looks fine um and this will you know kind of buff up a little better obviously all the pitting will be there there was a bunch of rust on the inside of this and then this plate was complete rust you can see how pitted it is uh, this is a part you don't see, so no big deal on this one. We'll just shine that up a little bit to uh, prevent the rust from coming back. Uh, that's the other thing to note. You know, like this rust will come back. You know, basically if you just get that wet, the surface rust will rust again. So I just threw a little bit of uh, magnet aluminum polish on there. That'll help prevent it from rusting. And we'll do the whole thing with the magnet aluminum polish uh, before we install all these parts. All right, so let's move on. All right. So I'm working on the uh, final piece here, which is uh, getting this coin door looking better. Uh, if you saw in a previous segment, after I cleaned it, a lot of scratches going everywhere. So you can already see I got it looking a lot better. Um, so here's how I started. I started with 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, you want to do this wet. I, did, I use WD-40. I don't know, it's stainless steel. I just like to use WD-40 as my lubricant. Uh, so I went all in one direction with 400 grit. And then I cleaned that off and I went with 600 grit all in one direction and WD-40. And now I am doing uh, 800 grit, just going all in one direction, keeping it lubricated with WD-40. And you can see I got a lot of the scratches out. Now, to get all these scratches out, I could be here all day. And I don't have all day. So I'm going to go over this one more time with 800 grit. And then uh, we'll buff this up. And that, you know, and I'm going to call it. Um, it already looks a ton better. Once we get this all cleaned up, it'll look real good. So let me grab another uh, piece of 800 grit. And I'm just going to go over this one more time. And then I'm going to say it is good enough. You know, there's dings in the panel. The panel's bowed a little bit. Uh, like I said, you could spend days and days and days trying to make this panel look great. And I, I don't have that kind of time. And it's already looking pretty good. So I just put some WD-40 on my 800 grit wet dry sandpaper here and I'm just going over the whole panel following the grain that's already in the stainless steel. And you can see we're looking, you know, pretty good. There's still some scratches and dings and stuff like that. But I am pretty happy with that. That is looking, it's looking pretty sharp. So let me uh, get this all cleaned up with some uh, glass cleaner and uh, clean up all the residue. And I'll be right back. All right, got this all cleaned up. Looks pretty good. Um, just using a microfiber cloth and using some of my mother's magnet aluminum polish and we're just going to use this on the uh, face and around the edges uh, again you want to go with the grain you do not want to you know just do swirl patterns or anything because that's how you end up with what this coin door looked like when i bought it just want to go in one direction so i'm just gonna go at this for a while and then uh, it'll haze over and you kind of buff it off and clean everything up 
and when I get to that point, uh, you can already see it's looking pretty good. So let me uh, continue with this, and like I said, after I clean it up, uh, I'll come back and uh, show you where I'm at, and uh, we will start to assemble this coin door. All right, so there it is, all buffed up. Uh, I spent about an hour, solid hour, just working on the face of the coin door here. You can see it looks pretty good, heck of a lot better than it did when I started. It's nice and shiny. Once we get it populated with all the parts and get the sticker on it, it'll look real nice. I'm quite happy with it. And uh, so now that that's done, uh, I just have a couple things left to do. And let's do that now. All right, so there's just a, a couple more stainless steel pieces in the game. Uh, got the coin insert trim, the coin return flap, and the uh, this is the piece that goes inside the coin return area. So I'm just going to use a red scotch right pad and some WD-40 on that to uh, regrain these parts. And then after I get done this, we'll hit it with some uh, Magan aluminum polish to shine these parts up. And then uh, we'll be done with uh, prepping all the parts. All right, so we got these parts all shined up with the uh, Magan aluminum polish. And then I put a little wax on them. And buff that off so these parts are ready to go uh, so now I am going to uh, lay out all the parts on this workbench uh, so we can start to assemble things I need to get my pictures my before pictures up on my computer up here uh, so let me uh, get everything laid out and I'll be right back and I'll show you what we're starting with okay so here we are I got all the parts laid out all these parts are just for the coin door. Uh, so we took this coin door apart last Sunday, and now it is the following Sunday. So the whole week, all I did uh, was ultrasonic these parts, evaporus, evaporus the parts that needed the rust to removed. Uh, a lot of parts went through a tumbler with walnut shells. All the parts that fit in, in a tumbler went through a tumbler with corn cob media. Uh, a lot of stuff was hand buffed. Uh, you saw we just did the, uh, the coin door today. I had to clean and buff and scotch bright the door frame. Uh, the pieces over there, uh, all the hardware, uh, these plastic pieces. I uh, went through the ultrasonic cleaner and then I used uh, Nuvis 3 and Nuvis 2 to try to polish these up a little bit. Uh, coin door, uh, the coin inserts. So all these parts throughout the whole week, uh, it's all I did was work on these parts. Uh, and now we're ready to go. So to start, I have some like sub assemblies I need to put together. Uh, so I'm going to work on getting those little sub assemblies done. And then when I get those done, uh, I'll come back and we'll put the whole coin door together. Uh, my before pictures are right up here on the computer. So I'm able to reference them. And I took a ton of pictures of this door from all different angles and stuff uh, when I took it off. So although it looks a little daunting <laughs> with all these parts and screws and springs and everything, uh, I think it'll go together pretty smoothly. It is probably going to take a while, though, I, I would imagine. We'll see how this goes. But I imagine it's going to take at least an hour and a half to uh, put this all together. But... Uh, We'll see how it goes. Uh, so let me get some of these sub-assemblies done and then I'll be right back. All right, so I got a lot of these uh, sub-assemblies kind of built. Uh, everything's looking good and working the way it's supposed to. Uh, so I am going to start bolting some more stuff to the coin door and get this done.
right, we've pretty much got the coin door assembled to the point where we can bolt it to the cabinet now, and then we'll put the coin mex in and the sticker on the front and some of the other details. Uh, but you can see it came out pretty good. Everything's nice and shiny and clean. Everything works nice and smooth. And then on the front side, start buttons in, coin reject, and you know, everything looks pretty good. A heck of a lot better than it did when we started. So let me get the cabinet set up in the middle of the workshop and we'll get this bolted in and we still got to get this. Uh, this is the wiring harness that runs across the tilt panel and here's all the wires for the tilt assembly. So we still got to get all that hooked up. Uh, just a couple parts left. Some of the wire clips for the tilt panel. Uh, I got to put the lock in, uh, but not much. So uh, let me set that all up and I'll be right back. All right, so let's get this coin door back on. It did end up taking about an hour and a half to kind of get this coin door all assembled, maybe even a hair longer, uh, just to figure out where everything goes and everything. And we still have some fine tuning to do once we get this all hooked up. But uh, kind of get the wiring harness in here. And we want to be careful, we don't want to scratch the cabinet. All right, so the inside of the coin door is all done. I got the wiring through the tilt panel here back in. I'm not going to put the actual plumb bob on until we get the game in the room, so I'm probably going to have to bring it on on a hand cart. Uh, flipper switch over here is hooked up. Got this plugged in, and uh, you can see coin door looks good. Uh, got coin mechs in. I just want to check them real quick. So uh, this is the lockout solenoid. Uh, so when the game's off and you put a coin in, it should go to the coin return which it did. Let's check this other one. Yes, it went to the coin return. So when the game is powered on, this coil sucks in and that will now allow our, a quarter to pass to the coin mech and the quarter should land in the bottom of the cabinet here. And it did. Let's check the other one. And it did. So I think the inside of the cabinet is pretty much done now. Um, so yeah, we're looking pretty good and it's already getting kind of late on a Sunday. So I think that is all I'm going to get done today. So between, uh, Monday or Tuesday and Wednesday, which is my next day off, uh, we'll get the rest of this cabinet buttoned up and bring it into the game room and, uh, yeah, and we'll be done and we'll finish up this video. So that'll be it for now. I'll be back tomorrow. All right, so here's the front of the coin door. Came out pretty nice. Uh, we just need to get the uh, sticker on. Got the new sticker from uh, Pinball Resource. Uh, so what I did so far is I cleaned the area where the sticker is going to go with alcohol. And then I put two pieces of blue tape here and I measured the center of the circle so that I can try to get this on as straight as I can. <clears throat> So we're basically just going to peel it and stick it on. Uh, it's kind of peeled in half. So I think I'll take this bottom smaller section off and kind of line it up. So let's uh, see if we can get this done easily enough. So since the top is not sticking, I, I just kind of lightly stuck it just so I can get an idea of how straight I am. And I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the blue horizon here to my marks and they look pretty good. And then I'm trying to center it in the opening, which looks pretty decent. This is one of those things, if you have OCD like me, and it's a little crooked, it'll bother you forever. But I think, I 
think I'm going to go with that. I think that's good enough. So I'm sticking the bottom on. Trying not to get any air bubbles in it. And then we'll peel it back and peel the rest of the backing off and kind of work it up as we go. And then peel our blue tape off. And there we go. We got a good looking uh, coin door there. And that definitely looks pretty straight. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so the inside of the cabinet is all done. I kind of neatened up some of the wiring with some uh, zip, uh, zip ties. Uh, so the cabinet's ready to go inside and we're gonna do that in just a second. I also uh, polished up the lockdown bar. So the lockdown bar looks real good. So that's ready to go on once we get it in the house. And also the new leg bolts. I got new leg bolts from Pinball Life. And I just took to my Harbor Freight buffer with the white rouge. And I buffed all of the heads just to get them shiny. Because when you buy new bolts, they're kind of dull. So shining them up, it doesn't take very long. It takes maybe 10 minutes to do all eight bolts. And then I cleaned off all the rouge. And I just threw a little wax on them. So they're ready to go. So let me go, uh, I gotta go out back to the shed to get the hand cart and then we'll get this thing on the hand cart and get it ready to go inside. All right, so I need to get the cabinet off my uh, Harbor Freight cart and onto the hand truck so that we can get it into the house. So I'm just gonna, I put a blanket on the floor over there. We don't want to scratch up the back of the cabinet that we spent all the time fixing up. So my card, I have these uh, insulation pipe foam on there to help protect it. And then I'm just going to use a... Uh, towel on the bottom to help protect from scratching the game. Alright, so I think we're about ready to go here. I'll uh, get this wheeled into the game room and I will see you back in the game room. Alright, so I mentioned earlier my game came with a 28 and a half inch legs. And Gottlieb System 1s use 27-inch legs. Uh, so I got new 27-inch chrome legs uh, from Pinball Resource. I got new leg levelers from Pinball Life. Uh, so these are all set to go on. And I got my bolts that I also got from Pinball Life that I have already polished up. And we're just going to do this old school because I don't feel like bringing my pinball cart in here tonight. So we'll put the front legs on first. Uh, out of the four legs I got from Pinball Life, I took the two that, uh, sorry, from Pinball Resource. I took the two legs that look the best, and I'm using them on the front. And then we'll use the other two for the back. I got my front leg levelers all the way in, and I pretty much have the uh, rear leg levelers um, all the way out. We'll start there, and once we get the game together, we'll check the play field angle, and we'll shoot for six and a half degrees. So let me get these uh, front legs bolted on and then we'll tilt the game back and I'll use my knee to uh, put the uh, back legs on since the cabinet's pretty light since there's not much in it. All right, so now I'm just gonna tilt the front down. And I got my legs laid out on either side. My leg bolts are right here. So let's see how bad this is going to be. Nah, no big deal. Except I can't reach my bolts. All 
All right, so we got it set up uh, pretty much where it's going to go in this corner, at least for now. Uh, and I put the tilt bob in now that we have the cabinet in place. I didn't want to have that on when I had the game up on the cart. Uh, I cleaned the glass. This piece of glass is pretty bad. Uh, we're probably going to swap it with Stingray once we get the game up and running. And I guess we'll have to wait maybe till Allentown in May to get some new glass. I, I need new glass for this game. I need new glass for Stingray. Uh, Disco Fever and Roller Games, actually. Uh, Back to the Future is the only one that has new glass, which I got at Allentown years ago. Uh, so I just got to put the lockdown bar on. Hopefully it fits and we don't have to make any adjustments. Pretty good. See if the coin door still closes. It does. And we give that a little wipe down. And there we go. Cabinet is now done. So now that that's done, we can uh, get working on the head. The head's actually sitting here under this blanket next to me. Uh, so starting next week, we'll get that out in the garage and start working on that. Uh, but there's the cabinet. Looks real good in here. Uh, that's going to do it for this video. So let's head back to the workshop and we'll wrap it up. All right. So that will do it for part number three of the pinball restoration update on the 1979 Gottlieb countdown. Uh, the garage is much roomier at the moment now that the cabinet's in the game room. And the cabinet came out real great um, as far as, you know, parts that we bought for it. We really didn't buy much of anything. Um, I bought the legs, uh, the leg plates, the leg protectors, and the leg bolts. Um, other than that, a couple uh, dollar parts here and there, like the, uh, the uh, housings and the buttons for the flippers. Um, I think that was about it. I did have to buy one coin mech. There was only one coin mech in the game when I bought it, so I got a coin mech for nine bucks from Pinball Life. Uh, so, you know, I, trying not to buy much of anything for this game because it really doesn't need it you know all these parts uh, are able to be cleaned up and restored and uh, that's the great thing about you know the way I like to do restorations is I try to reuse you know as much as I can and as you saw the cabinet looks great uh, inside and out um, you know really really cleaned up well uh, so in part number four which will be the next video we will get the head out here and we will start tearing the head apart completely and going through the same process of, uh, you know, cleaning, buffing the head and uh, cleaning all the parts on the inside. There's quite a bit of rusty brackets and stuff inside the head. So we'll be doing uh, some evaporust uh, and getting that all done. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something about restoring pinball machines on the cheap. Uh, also, I hope you have a happy Halloween since today is Halloween. And if you're watching this video in the future, I hope you had a great Halloween. Uh, so that'll do it. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Uh, check me out on Facebook. It's My Vintage Pinball starring Pin Dude. Uh, if you have a question, comment, you'd like me to read on the air, send an email to fierodug at gmail.com. I am Pin Dude. This is My Vintage Pinball, and I will see you next time.